Hey friends, let's talk a little bit about cloud computing, specifically cloud security and the Microsoft Cloud. And let's talk a little bit about the fundamentals. I'm talking about the different Microsoft Clouds that's out there, the different aspects of the Microsoft Cloud, like when you're trying to set up that first environment. I find that there is a lot of confusion around, firstly, the components of the Microsoft Cloud, like not many people are aware of the three different Microsoft Clouds that there are. And then there is also the aspect of setting up kind of your tenant level, your subscription etc. So let's get into this. I think the first thing to note is that Microsoft uses very powerful cloud services, right? So what we mean by this is that there are actually three different Microsoft clouds. These three clouds are completely separate infrastructure from each other. Yes, we can integrate them. Yes, we can pull data from the one into the other, but essentially they are three completely different cloud environments and cloud setups and technologies and solutions as a whole, if you want to put it that way. So the first one is the Microsoft 365 cloud, right? And then so there's the Microsoft 365 cloud, there's the Microsoft Azure cloud, and then there is the Microsoft Dynamics Cloud, Dynamics 365. But a lot of people only either know about the applications like the O365 or M365 applications, like a OneDrive, SharePoint, etc. They don't actually know that 365 apps are part of the Microsoft 365 Cloud, so and it's like a completely separate entity. I think we should frame our minds a little bit around if we are doing cloud security, especially in the Microsoft Cloud, we need to understand that there are three different clouds firstly, and secondly, then we need to be able to gain visibility across the stack of these three different clouds. Does that make sense? So we need to be able to get the insight and analytics from Dynamics. And then we also need to be able to use the management capabilities and the security visibility capabilities that we have in the Azure cloud to kind of span that across the stack. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, and I'm going to pull up my notes here now. Let's pull a, talk a little bit about, oh, I'm going to struggle today. Let's talk a little bit about the 365 Cloud. Okay, so now the 365 Cloud is the cloud that has all of your productivity tools, right? So you can think of this like your OneDrive, your SharePoint, your Teams, the O365 applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Those are all like when you are using the cloud-based 365 applications, these are actually sitting within the Microsoft 365 Cloud. So let me think of a prime example for this. Like if you have a small business, you're not really using cloud-based infrastructure, but your small business are like you're only using Microsoft 365 applications, like you're using Teams or you're using SharePoint to store your documents or using OneDrive to save your files. Those are prime examples of a small business organization that's only using the Microsoft 365 Cloud. Then we have the Microsoft Azure Cloud, which is obviously the infrastructure and platform service cloud environment, right? So this is a comprehensive platform of cloud computing capabilities. So think of SQL, storage, your network infrastructure, your server infrastructure, your AI tools, even some of the intelligence and automation capabilities for platform services would be spun up and configured within this Microsoft Azure cloud environment. So if you think of the traditional cloud capabilities like your lift and shift, into the cloud where you took on-prem infrastructure and moved it from the data center. You basically reconfigured those servers and migrated them to cloud. The cloud that they were migrated to is most likely, if it's Microsoft, then it's Microsoft Azure cloud. So that is for your compute services. So if you think of this in a large company, you might have an Azure AD or Intra ID setup. And then in that Intra ID setup, you have your identity configuration and you have then your services and server components that lives inside of that Azure cloud environment. Now, it's also important to note that the Intra ID configuration actually spans, you can use the identity management capabilities across your 365 tenant, so your Microsoft 365 tenant, as well as your Dynamics 365 tenant. So the Entra ID is actually your most global service, but you are leveraging the identity capabilities that sits within Entra ID within the Azure cloud. You are leveraging that across the stacks, making it kind of a more global service. I hope you're still following and tracking me here. Let me know in the comments if you're not 
or if you are good with these types of explanations and if you want to see more of these types of videos. Okay, next we're moving on to the Dynamics 365 Cloud. Now, the Dynamics 365 Cloud is actually a very different capability. So it's a set of intelligence business capabilities. So what this means is it's designed to help you to manage things like your customer relationships, your finances, your customer flows, those types of things. So you can think of the likes of CRM and ERP tools combined together in order to show you output of of certain business insights to help you enhance your business operations. So it's more business focused. It is also a more SaaS kind of delivery services, but where you don't really configure anything on the platform layer or on the infrastructure layer, you configure everything above the platform layer. If you understand the platform services, software services, and then infrastructure services, which I have explained before. Let's think of an entity here. I think, let me see if I can make an example. So let's search up a company like Coca-Cola as an example. So a company like Coca-Cola would use the Dynamics 365 Cloud to optimize their sales processes, which in turn then really helps them with improving their customer engagement and then streamlining of operations across multiple environments. So it's about pushing in the data, the financial data, the, the data that you use to analyze kind of those sales processes, really ERP type processes, CRM type models. You push that into your Dynamics 365 cloud and then you get the output from there. Let's focus a little bit more deeper into the Microsoft Azure tenant based setup. So let's remove the Dynamics Cloud and let's focus maybe on the Azure Cloud and then what I'm about to explain will also lean in a lot into the 365 Cloud capabilities. There's a lot of overlap in the identity services and some of the security services that flow between the Azure Cloud environment and the 365 Cloud environment. Okay, so I'm going to try my best to explain it and then you try and stick with me while I'm explaining it. So when you set up a Microsoft cloud organization, there will, or an environment, an environment, there will always be different levels. Now these different levels are usually an organization level, a tenant level, a subscription level, and then you have things underneath the subscription level. So those could be services, licenses, there's different aspects that go underneath the subscription level. But these are kind of, this is the core frame of your organization and how you're going to set up your organization. When you set up this organization, you're always setting up the organization level first. Okay, now let's talk about an organization. So an organization is what represents your business entity. So think of Cyber Queen as a business. So if I register a Microsoft organization for my business, this organization is going to be what represents my business entity. This is like your domain name, so cyberqueen.org. That's what would be my organization. And this would be the ultimate container that would host basically everything that you're going to deploy within that container, including your tenant and subscriptions, as well as the licenses that you provision for your specific organization in the 365 cloud as well. So this organization is really important that you get it right. But when you spin that up, that's going to host a a lot of your business data, your assets, your licenses, your tenant subscriptions, everything. So then we're going to move to the tenant level. Now the Microsoft tenant is going to be your Entra ID tenant. So this tenant resides or is located within a specific region. When you're actually deploying the or provisioning the tenant for the first time, you are actually asked to select the regional location of deployment. Now, this is really important because this is for regulatory data governance, data sovereignty requirements. Most of your users should be located where your tenant is located. This doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to deploy assets globally. You absolutely do. However, you need to deploy your intra ID tenant to where most of your users are located actually from a business perspective. All right, then let's look at subscriptions. Now, subscriptions is what you deploy within your Entra ID tenant. So it's a level below the tenant. You can have multiple, multiple subscriptions. You can have management groups. Subscriptions can be grouped within management groups in the tenant. We'll talk a little bit about management group shortly and the purpose of it. But your subscription is basically the container that hosts a specific set of resources and that's your agreement to Microsoft. So 
The payment that you make is going to be on the subscription that you've provisioned and the resources that you have provisioned within that subscription. So if you don't have a subscription within your Azure cloud, you cannot deploy resources. Your billing happens based on subscription. So some businesses actually roll out the model that there is an application per subscription because then they can back pull that to the business based on the application or there is a subscription for each region because the business pulls back or the IT bills back to the business based on region. So depending on your setup and your structure, you're likely going to have different subscription models based on your actual requirement. Then you can have subscriptions grouped into management groups. Now the purpose and function of management groups really is just to create that overarching container for you to manage governance, policies, permissions, etc. onto a number of subscriptions. So if you can think one application maybe has five subscriptions, you have front end, back end, then you have different functions services and you want to separate all of these for various reasons network access user access control policy based control there are many reasons why you want to separate assets and resources based on a subscription and a container but basically you can then add all of these subscriptions grouped into one application based management group and the purpose of this management group really is just for better management and better governance of all of these subscriptions within your tenant large organizations have hundreds hundreds of subscriptions within their tenant. So this really comes in handy for regional separation, regional visibility, application separation, application visibility, and so many more other reasons why you want to separate subscriptions. Okay, then you also actually have user accounts. Now user accounts are managed within one single intra ID tenant. Now user accounts are used across the intra ID and the Azure environment, right? You can also provision single sign on of these user accounts to your Dynamics cloud environment, but the permissions are managed slightly different on the Dynamics 365 environment. But for the most part, your users are going to be seamlessly integrated into roles, permissions, scopes, licenses that you provision inside of the Azure and 365 cloud environments. From a user management perspective, this is also important if you have an on-premise environment and you're actually connecting your Azure or your Active Directory on-prem environment to your end environment because then you can use tools, very handy tools like the Azure AD Connect. You can use a tool like Azure AD Connect to basically connect your domain, your Azure Directory services users up to your Azure Active Directory environment. So allowing kind of seamless integration of users across the board. Okay, and then the final thing I think we should note in the setup is that actually we can have different license models and different licenses for different users. License allows your capability of services, right? So Microsoft, we have the very famous E3, E5 discussion, but I mean, there are also so many other license models. There are F type license models. There are different license models for education. Um, the F type was for frontline services as an example, but the license that you allocate then to that specific user group or subset or specific to your organization will enable, will directly enable the capabilities that you have. So you can even have subscriptions in your Azure AD based on what the users are licensed to use. This is also a good way of managing this and governing your identity based license structure based on the services that you enable for different users. And there are always many reasons that you enable many different services for many different user types, right? But the licenses is actually a really important component because you can have a subset of licenses authorizing users to use E5 versus a subset of, subset of license authorizing users to use E3. It just depends kind of on that the structure you know the commercial impact to your business e5 can be super expensive in some cases but if you don't use as an example any other productivity or automation or security tools elsewhere then e5 could be quite a lucrative investment for your business if that's if you kind of invested in the stack but most enterprises actually use different types of tools and so therefore you often have an overlap with e5 and then need to see where e5 really is applicable to your business and where it is not. Okay, so I really, really struggled to speak today, but I still hope that that was helpful to you. Let me know what other questions you have. I think in the next video, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the subscriptions and into the different capabilities of the 
Azure Cloud environment and what you can actually deploy within the Azure Cloud environment. If that's interesting to you, definitely let me know. But I hope you got a clear understanding of kind of the hierarchy of when you deploy firstly three different clouds and then when you deploy the organization versus the tenant versus subscriptions and then you have your user accounts and your license structure that you need to consider when you are deploying things within your Microsoft Cloud environment. And one thing that's really important to say is like with that deployment, that's also the levels at which you're going to consider security, right? You're going to consider your organizational security policy and governance structure. That's going to be one that's super important from that overarching layer perspective. Like what's your security strategy? What's your tooling and capabilities that you're going to introduce to your organization? Are you going to go full stack Microsoft? If you are, then E5 might be something that you consider. What is it? The compliance suite and the EMS security management suite as well from a provisioning perspective or using Intune device management capabilities, you know, that might be something. Then for those of you who want to go into the cloud space, but are actually working on identity based solutions, intra ID, conditional access policies, those kind of things that govern the identity and access management space is really phenomenal space to get into on the user management side of things. And then there's of course the whole DevOps discussion on on actual deployment of cloud-based assets within Azure. So there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to discuss. Let me know if you guys have any specific questions, anything that you wanna know more specifically that's impacting you in your everyday, day-to-day -day life that we need to talk about in a little bit more detail. And we can of course cover that as we go along this Microsoft Cloud or Cloud journey as a whole. That's it for this video. Subscribe if you are new and if you wanna see more cybersecurity content, that's what I'm here for. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.